Good evening, GCAF. Welcome to the first Wednesday of April 2021 and to tonight's prayer gathering. I am Emmy Molo, one of GCAF's full-time staff. We are so glad that you could join us in prayer and partner with us in this ministry as you have been for a long time. Tonight, we'll be praying for the rising COVID-19 cases, for our experts and authorities managing all concerns regarding the pandemic, and also for the media covering news and information regarding it. While these may seem a lot of things, we know that sometimes overwhelming kaayo ang mga balita o panghitabo, no? But our God is greater above and over all these. So before we proceed, manghangyo ko to please share this video with your family, your friends, your wider or IDM groups, and also, um, dako gyud ang kahimuan kung kitang tanan maghiusa sa pagampo. The Word of God exhorts us to pray for all kinds of supplications and to pray continually. In a few moments, we'll be singing songs of praise and worship. So please stay tuned and the Lord be blessed with our prayer gathering tonight. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Then what can stand against? is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, Awesome and power of God, our God. And if our God is for us, 
then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, and who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Then what can stand against? So Good evening, everyone. Again, welcome to our uh, prayer meeting. No, we do this every every Wednesday evening, and I praise and thank the Lord that 
even through all of the uh, uh, situations that we are experiencing right now, um, the spike of COVID and all of the problems that we have personally and even through um, as a country, no? a lot of things that are going on sa ato ang nation, but yet uh, many of you are still uh, here right now. Um, still our faith in the Lord is there. Our faith in prayer is is, is there, which is why uh, anaak kita karon naga simba sa ginoo o naga ampo sa ginoo. And I really thank the Lord for that and um, ang ato ang faith in God's Word uh, naapod. So, ang ako agyod ning gipasalamatan sa ginoo o akong pagampo nga padayon gita nga dili matarog sa ato ang pagtuo uh, sa ato ang ginoo uh, nga si Ginoong Jesus. You know what? Um, two Sundays ago, nalipay kaayo ko kay ang topic na to um, sa preaching is really um, kanang haom sa ato ang gina-celebrate which was uh, the Holy Week. Um, and I thank the Lord nakaingon yun ko nga. Grabe ka timing Lord on how you were able to um, kanang uh, timing all of these things ang uh, pag-abot sa last or oh, two Sundays ago uh, the death uh, or, or the, the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, kay nag mauputo ang nag-welcome sa ato ang uh, the Passion Week but yet last Sunday uh, kaingon na po ko nga nindot na unta kayo ang timing two Sundays ago pero last Sunday which was supposedly the a celebration of the Resurrection Sunday, many call it Easter, I'll, uh, I prefer to call it the Resurrection Sunday, um, nagpabilin gihapunta with uh, sa atong preaching with um, the situations of, of you know, uh, going into the death of Christ. So I was really um, still thankful to the Lord because I know the Lord has really prepared a lot of, you know, um, and truths for us to learn, especially from last Sundays. I do praise and thank the Lord for what He is doing sa Jika through the messages that we have uh, this Sunday. But one of the things that I really want to share, uh, especially now, is in the area of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, probably ang resurrection uh, will be um, talked about sa Sunday probably a month from now or weeks from now uh, but i really want to go through this right now in um siguro a late celebration of the resurrection sunday um if you have bibles with you please open it with me so first corinthians chapter 5 verses 12 to 19 first corinthians chapter 5 verses 12 to 19 if you are there na uh, sa inyong mga Bibles, uh, please read with me silently. No, uh, Ako mag- magbasa ko uh, verbally. Verse 12. Now if Christ is preached that He has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith also is in vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that He raised Christ whom He did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have, fer- have perished. If we have hoped in Christ only in this life, we are of all people most to be pitied. Praise and thank God for the reading of His words. So one of the things that we often ask, or I have asked uh, once probably in my life, is in the area of how can I really be assured that my prayer works? How do I really know 
that my faith or your faith in Christ really work? Or what is our assurance that my salvation is and your salvation is real? How do we know if the gospel really works? Now, during this time where we have um, a lot of, uh, uh, we want to be assured uh, in this time of uh, online selling or online buying, uh, I think the assurance is one of the most important thing a buyer like you and me uh, of online shopping uh, that we need to be assured. Is it really, will my product be, will come at a good status and will come on time as I have tried to um, order it? Um, or there might be a lot of defects along the way as it would come to a point that I would have no use of it anymore. I have a friend who told me a couple of days ago, probably uh, yesterday, that he ordered a shoe um, that looks so good uh, online, but when it came, it still looked good. But the problem is the size is wrong. It's way too large for his feet. But because um, these things can be seen, can be felt, when it arrives, we, the assurance uh, will be clarified, you know, if it is good or bad. But yet, for us, when it comes, for many of us, uh, like prayer, in our faith, and our salvation, or the gospel, sometimes many of you, many of us, does not actually uh, feel the, you know, the visible and, you know, the, the, the outcome that can be sensed by our different senses. Which is why most often we ask these questions. Does it really work? Does prayer work? Does my faith work? Does salvation work? Does the gospel work? Now, talking about the gospel, prior to the, the verses that, we, uh, that I, I read to you, um, uh, see, see, Paul actually talked about this in verses 3 to 8 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Allow me to read it to you. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, He appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then He appeared to James, then to all apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. In this part of 1 Corinthians 15, Paul talked about the, you know, the, the, really the center of the gospel story of the Lord Jesus Christ, wherein he said that according to scriptures, Christ died for your, your sins and my sins and the sins of, of the world according to scriptures that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day. So I believe for us to answer the questions that we have about faith, about prayer, about salvation, about the gospel, uh, one of the things, especially within the gospel, that the answer of that hinges upon is really on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Buhi si Cristo. Uh, uh, bisan o uh, namatay siya 2,000 years ago pero kadtong Sabado wala siya patay buhi naman siya no? he is alive so uh, kadtong moingon nga patay ang ginoo no? di ta magpabuyag kay patay ang ginoo kadtong Sabado but Jesus is alive He has resurrected uh, 2,000 years ago and uh, that was seen by more than 500 people according to Paul more than 500 plus people. I don't know about you, uh, during Sunday evening, um, I know that uh, you have uh, come and or watched our gathering live during the day, and, but I don't know what you did at the evening of Sunday, but one of the things that I did was listen to uh, a prominent 
NT New Testament scholar. His name is Dr. Michael Lycona. He was live in Facebook last Sunday. He's a Christian scholar whose work is uh, focused on uh, the resurrection of the Christ. How historically accurate or true is the resurrection? Because there is, uh, we, we, the resurrection is uh, such an amazing, miraculous event that to a point that many people would try to discredit that this really happened because it has never happened. Um, there is no historical record of a person, um, a real person, a historical person, rising from the dead um, except for the Lord Jesus Christ. So he talked about this. And then because of around 500 plus people who has seen the Lord Jesus Christ and has um, said that the resurrection was true, uh, it gave a very heavy weight on the historicity, on how real, how true the resurrection is. Because what are the other options, according to Dr. Lycona? If Christ did not rise from the dead, what would be the other options? He listed it down. Well, probably, he said, that the disciples were experiencing mass hallucinations. But according to him, mass hallucinations it doesn't work like this where people had conversations, they ate with Jesus, they listened to the teachings of Jesus and so many things that Jesus did uh, after he died, when he resurrected. Resurrected. So that is not a, a weighty argument against the resurrection. Others said that probably Jesus has a twin, which is why the, the disciples said, Jesus, it was a twin. But then, we look at historical records. We know that Jesus does uh, do not have a twin, so that is very impossible to happen. Probably, again, the disciples maybe they lied, or probably it was only a metaphor you know, that Jesus is alive. His teaching is alive, but Jesus did not is not really alive. And the big the biggest problem of that, according to Doctor Lycona, is that um, right after. The, the disciples believed and have uh, that he has risen and appeared to them. The rapid spread of Christianity happened through these emboldened disciples, even in immense persecution. And that is impossible to happen coming from a very discouraged disciples because of the death of their teacher and only for a f few days. Three days, when Jesus rose from the dead, they were so emboldened that they, they are willing to die for their faith. And, and if it is a lie, or if it is a, kanang, uh, uh, a metaphor, it is very impossible for a person to die and, to willing, uh, and be willing to go through persecution, immense persecution for a lie or a meta metaphor. There are a lot of disciples who went through a lot of persecution because they, they believed that Jesus is alive and Jesus appeared to them and uh, call, have called them to minister and to share the gospel wherever they went. So, the last option that we have is probably Jesus did not die. According to uh, some of uh, the religion out there who also thinks that Jesus is a prophet, they said that Jesus did not die. He, he came down from, uh, from the cross. Uh, but then, um, that is you know, a very big problem because according to Dr. Lycona, the chances of a person um, uh, getting out alive from an immense torture in the hands of the Romans. Many of you have seen The Passion of the Christ, which is a very accurate depiction of the torture of the Lord Jesus Christ is uh, very slim. The chances of a, pers a person uh, coming out alive is very slim. And to think that it's only a few days, three days, or uh, after the, the torture and the crucifixion, that Jesus can now walk, can now talk, can now eat with his, uh, with his disciples and show up everywhere uh, together with the 500 disciples it is very impossible for it he did not die even you know historians both christians and non-christian historians 
really made statement that Jesus died and rose from the dead. Some of the non-Christian uh, historical writers, uh, their names is Josephus, Tacitus, Lucia, Lucian de Samosata, Marabar de Serapion, and even the Talmud uh, mentions of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the option that is very weighty is that yes, Jesus died. That is historically accurate. And three days after, Jesus rose from the dead. And again, there was an empty tomb. The stone was rolled away. The linen that was wrapped, uh, there was no more dead body when, uh, when the disciples and the women uh, found the tomb. Jesus is indeed alive. History has proven that. Most importantly, the scripture says that and we believe that. I, uh, I saw a post of one of um, our leaders here at uh, GCAF um, in Facebook where it says that uh, Jesus' death proves his humanity. Jesus' resurrection proved his divinity. I like that. Um, it tells also a lot of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And indeed, um, his death proved of the 100% humanity of Christ and his resurrection proved he is 100% divine as well. But more than just historical proof, more than just all of these things that uh, New Testament scholars have discussed and debated against, one of the things that I really love and um, has really emboldened me as well with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is because, is because of what Paul said in, our, in the, um, the preaching or the text that we just read. In 1 Corinthians 15 verses 13 to 14, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ tells us that the preaching that we have, uh, the preaching of God's people throughout history is not in vain. The preaching that we, ha well, we are doing right now here at GCAP is not in vain. You listening to my preaching, uh, the, the Holy Spirit's um, word for us uh, this evening is not in vain because Jesus is alive. Verse 14 tells us that um, it's not only the preaching, but our faith is not in vain. Holding on to the Lord Jesus Christ, even if it, you know, it, it, it seems like it doesn't make sense, uh, even if there are a lot of problems and a lot of um, um, discouragement all around us, but holding on to the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in His Word, um, is not in vain because Jesus is alive. And also, uh, verse 15 to 16, if we say that um, uh, Jesus did not rise from the dead, it says there that uh, we make God a liar. But because we believe that Jesus is indeed alive, we have proven not only to ourselves, but to people around us that God is truth. His, he is, um, uh, uh, his veracity can be trusted. His truth can be trusted. God does not lie. And in, verses, in verse 17, um, if we believe that Jesus is really alive, put our faith in Him, then we have been forgiven of our sins. We can really rely on that. Uh, that sins that we have made, it is all forgiven because Jesus is alive. But if not, then we still are in our sins. You know, if, if Jesus did not uh, it did, he didn't resurrect from the dead. Um, it, verse 5 tells us if we do not believe that Jesus is resurrected, then uh, death, the meaning of death is actually annihilation. Uh, pag mamatay ka, wala na. Uh, there's no more uh, ahead. But then, because Jesus is alive, our definition of death is not annihilation, extinction, but it's separation. Our spirit uh, and body uh, would be separated. That's the physical death. And the eternal death is the soul and uh, the presence of God, a separation of the soul and the uh, presence of God. But then because of the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have died, who put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in the Son of God, um, we, are, we will be reconciled, fully reconciled, uh, with God the Father 
and we will live together with Him in uh, eternal life. Verse 18 tells us that. And if Jesus Christ did not resurrect, well, probably we are the most pitiful and hopeless people in the world because we are putting our faith in something that did not happen. But Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. We have a hope-filled future. All of the things that may put us down and discourage us uh, will not you know, be victorious if we put our faith in Jesus because Jesus said He has overcome the world. My friends, when we believe in, in the resurrection, uh, we believe also or we have an assurance that our salvation is true. If we believe in the resurrection, we believe that our prayers are heard. When we believe in the resurrection, then our labor, what we do here for Jesus, for the ministry, for His kingdom, is not in vain. Our prayer, our ministry, our faith, and our salvation work because Jesus is alive. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you are alive. Our prayers are heard because you are alive. Our uh, faith works because you are alive. A ministry is not in vain. The things that we do for the ministry, the sacrifices that we do on a daily basis for the kingdom of God is not in vain because you are alive. Thank you, Jesus, for this hope-filled future that you have. Because you are alive, Lord, there is no amount of discouragement that can put us down. There is no amount of problem that would uh, take us away, separate, uh, separate us from God because you are alive. And the promise that you have is that you will be with us till the very end of the age. And we continue to put our trust in you. We continue to uh, trust in the power of prayer that it transforms us so that we can get to know or be in line of your will for us. Thank you for this opportunity to pray. And my, pray my prayer, Lord, is that as we pray, may we continue to truly be in line with your will. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Good evening, everyone. I am Lani Ginaihan, one of the full-time staff here in GCAP. So our prayer concerns for tonight is for the rising COVID-19 cases. Our country set a new record for the largest single-day increase in COVID-19 cases after the Department of Health registered 15,310 new cases as of Friday last week. Altogether, we have close to 800,000 confirmed COVID-19 patients since the pandemic reached the country. Also, as of April 3, the Department of Health reported a total of 165,715 active COVID-19 cases in the Philippines. Tonight, let us pray for our experts and authorities to find ways to stop the spread of COVID-19 variants, also to prevent future new variants from developing. Let us pray for God's wisdom to be upon them. According to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, For the Lord gives wisdom, from His mouth come knowledge and understanding. Let's unite our hearts to pray. The prayer items will be flashed in your screen.
let us pray. Father, we recognize your sovereignty amidst of pandemic. Tonight, we pray for willing heart to obey our authorities for the health measures nga gina implement. Praying for healing sa mga people nga affected for this vi virus, COVID-19, and continue, Lord, to minister them nga makita jud nila ang imong pagkaginoo and matagamtaman jud nila ang imong dako nga gugma o kaluoy sa ilahang kinabuhi. Kiningtanan akong giyampo, gipasalamatan sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen o Amen. Let's proceed to our prayer for the media. To better inform the public during these uncertain times, newsrooms all over the world have made pandemic coverage a priority. However, the ever-changing and sometimes unverified nature of COVID-19 data being released has left media people with challenges in providing accurate information to the public. Now, more than ever, we need access to good and reliable information. We need to win back the public's trust in the media. Tonight, let us pray for the media to maintain accurate reporting, also for the stop page of the prolification of fake news. According to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are His delight. Let's unite our hearts to pray. The prayer items will be flashed in your screen. Let us pray.
We praise you, Lord, for the life sa amo ang media team, for all the journalists and reporters, praying for divine intervention, strength, protection, and safety every day will be upon them. Also, Lord, I pray for reliable source and accurate reports nga ilahang i-broadcast every day. I pray also, Father God, that you will continue to bless them, Lord God, uh, the work nga imuhang gi sa ilaha, and continue to bless also their individual families. We commit to you everything, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Before we conclude tonight's prayer gathering, allow me just a few announcements. See you again next Wednesday for our virtual prayer gathering and every Wednesday at that, 7.30 p.m. via our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Next, Inside Out would like to invite you, our young people, to Coffee Night and T180. Coffee Night is a monthly, monthly gathering for college students and single adults and this month, our coffee night is happening tomorrow, April 8, 7 p.m. here at GCAF. So good news na siya, no? In person na nato siya buhaton. So strictly uh, health protocol adherent lang ta. So wear your face mask and your face shield when you're coming. And also T180 is a monthly gathering for high school students. That includes junior high and senior high school students. The next session will be on April 10, 7.30 p.m. over Zoom. So parents, please allow your uh, high school kids to join us. We also have our health-regulated in-person Sunday services. So we have 7 a.m., 10 a.m., and 3 p.m. The in-person gathering will also be broadcasted online through our Facebook and YouTube channels. We urge wider and IDM leaders to meet with your members, whether virtually, teleconference or video calls, or health protocol adherent in-person gatherings. Lastly, like and follow our Facebook pages, that's at Journey with GCAF, Inside Out GCAF, and at GCAF Worship. Our YouTube channels, that's Golden City Alliance Fellowship and GCAF Worship. I think that's about it for the announcements. Thank you.